Brothers and sisters, we have come to the 40th and the last episode of the third season. There's still a season four, but for the third season about the Son, the incarnate word, the obedient Son to Mary and Joseph, and now the Apostle of the Father for his kingdom, we have arrived even at that so called last breath of Jesus. Let us remember this segment of the Gospel of Mark that recalls that moment when Jesus gave his last breath. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Do you remember how I described to you the structure of the Temple of Jerusalem in the time of Jesus, where there was the Holy of Holies? The so called house that housed the Ark of the Covenant and is covered with a veil from top to bottom, from ceiling to the pavement. It was a belief that if you see God, it means you have died. And therefore, that veil conceals God. Now, it was during this passion and death of Jesus on the cross where the last breath of Jesus brought about this phenomenon. The veil of the sanctuary was torn into from top to bottom. What does it mean if not the inauguration of a new era of God's presence? No longer a presence mysterious that no one can behold. Now, this is God's presence. This is God on the cross. For what reason? For his great love for humanity. You want to know the definition of God? Yes, God is love, but love for himself? No, love for us. And that's why we realize this centurion who in seeing the phenomenon of the world, of that atmosphere, of that environment. And then this loud thunder and lightning with the veil of the temple cut into two from top to bottom. The evangelist says, so he saw God. Truly, this man was the Son of God. We have to know God. We've got to meet God today. We have to recognize Him. And we recognize Him not so much in His power and greatness, but how that power and greatness is willing to undergo trial, tribulation, suffering, pain, even death even at the cost of one's own life, as his son showed us. Church history is replete with martyrs from the first centuries of Christianity. And our own 
Filipino saints. The only two up to now officially declared are actually martyrs, missionaries at that, and even laymen. Suffering in his name has been the standard of authentic Christianity. In fact, we all make the sign of the cross as our identity gesture. We hope you and I can still do it in public places. To this day, to participate in the coming of the kingdom of God would require the willingness to bear the cross and its consequences. You know, it's so heartening to realize that such apostles are still present among us today. And I found one good person who can give us the good news of how he, or I mean, how she lived this offering of self from the time she was in high school. Hi everyone, my name is Chrissy and I'm here today to share a few things about how my student leadership days went when I was still in Assumption College. So just a quick context, I was the president of the student council when I was um, in my senior year. Um, back then, taking on student leadership in Assumption meant doing more work after school to prepare for activities for the student body. So classes would typically end at around 3.30 p.m., but I would stay on at least until like 6 p.m. just for meetings or brainstorming sessions with my peers. I lived in Quezon City, whereas, you know, Assumption was in Makati. So you could imagine that the travel home would take another one to one and a half hours. And that meant I'd get home at around 7.30 or 8 p.m. because of traffic. Um, many times I would actually feel super lazy and extremely tired to do my assignments or even study for the exam for my exams in the coming days. Um, usually at that time, my classmates would already be relaxed at around 8 p.m. You know, they'd be relaxed watching TV, whereas not me. Um, I just got home and I still had tons to do for the school. Then, you know, I'd wake up at around 5.30 a.m. just so that it can also beat the traffic and then I'd get to school 7 a.m. So I just felt like I was lacking so much sleep and I was just tired and then there was not much time to actually just relax and enjoy, at, you know, as, as a kid, as a 17-year-old who still kind of just wants to have fun. Um, even at that age, I already felt like I was doing so much. Um, I'd have so much in, on my plate in terms of tasks and then I also felt very weighed by the responsibility of being a student, uh, as an example rather, to the student body. And while I know I had every excuse to just, you know, get home and rest and, you know, say to myself, I deserve it, um, I knew in my heart that I still had a responsibility to be a student leader. So notice how the word student comes before leader. Um, as passionate I was as I was in doing student council work, I know that you know I, I knew that I had that responsibility first and foremost to be a good student, to actually study hard and come learn what I, I came to school to learn. You know, um, I, I knew that it, it's important that my academics never lag behind despite my leadership responsibilities. So looking back at what really inspired me to remain faithful to my duties and responsibilities as both a student leader, student and leader, um, it was really that sense of gratitude in my heart. Um, I knew that I was very lucky to have those opportunities and I knew that they were blessings from God. I was just so happy doing what I did and just having that chance even to do them. Um, and. You know, even if they did demand so much, they were always gifts and privileges from God. Um, recognizing these, you know, my position as, you know, gifts and blessings from God gave me that everyday push I needed to be more and do more. And it gave me that drive to keep going despite how tired I was um, every day. Um, so yes, despite feeling tired, I remain, I strive to remain faithful first and foremost to my responsibilities as a student by studying and doing my best there and then as a leader so by always leading by example, you know, by being a good student and, you know, leading with humility. 
I was far from perfect. I had so much shortcomings as both a student and a leader, but God was also very generous enough to send me very good and inspiring teachers and mentors who would give me that guidance or that, you know, that wisdom on how I can do my tasks better and how to balance my responsibilities. So that's basically a sharing of how my student leadership days went and how I've, I strive to remain faithful and loyal to my duties and responsibilities despite the cost of the sacrifices. Looking back, I don't really see them even as sacrifices because they've, they were, those hard times were gifts essentially. They helped me build resilience, discipline. They helped me recognize that despite how much you achieve, or despite all your accomplishments you actually cannot achieve you you actually did not achieve them alone um, without the help of mentors peers without the support of my family and without that sense of gratitude um, and you know faith in god i wouldn't have been able to overcome it so i'm just very grateful for those days and i and i know that um, whoever is whoever has is going through the same thing i hope that you remain inspired and that you're always reminded that god's blessing in enough god's blessing is enough to help you um stay motivated in doing your best in whatever you are doing so thank you very much mm -hmm.